G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. This week we're visiting again with Alan Upton, who's in the second stage of controlling water flows off his property to look after his downstream neighbours and avoid problems like this, with a whole heap of silt building up in creeks and waterways. Alan's already fenced off his creek from his livestock. We did that in a prior episode. This week, he's looking at restabilizing his banks and revegetating areas of damaged erosion. To do this, he's using a really innovative product that I'm very interested in, a type of concrete matting that's flexible and allows the environment to grow through it. Alan's now gonna show us what the problem is show us this amazing solution and then we're going to have a look at Glenn, his earth moving contractor, installing it and Glenn hopefully will take us through a few steps in the process of preparing the area for the product. If you like this video please hit the little subscribe button down there, give it a thumbs up, you've got no idea how much that helps and if you want more content check out timthompson.ag G'day Alan, how are you mate? Yeah. Long time no see. Yes, welcome back. Been a while since we, uh, since we put this fence in. Yes. Fenced off the creek. So, we've got another problem to talk about, haven't we? Yes. And water. <laughs> <laughs> too much water this time. Well, yes. not enough and then too much and everything. This is a fairly impressive pile of junk here. This was your spillway. This is a spillway that's put in by one or two owners back of uh, this property and uh, one reason or the other, whether it was rabbits, wombats, or just the water itself has got underneath it and undermined it, and this 150 mil concrete has just collapsed in on this area, on this spillway area, and is now causing erosion of uh, this fairly soft alluvial soil into the creek, which is no good for anybody. You're now looking at replacing a spillway with a system that has a little bit more flexibility to it? and yes, solving some problems yes, with erosion? Instead of a uh, hard surface like this, we're looking at something that's both absorbent for some of the water, yep. and but still won't, you know, in a storm event, it's still not going to wash away again. I imagine if you were to rebuild a spillway like this, it would be a fairly costly exercise. Yes, it's just truckloads of concrete. <laughs> truck all the time to make it as well, and, yeah. And the boxing of that uh, work is a lot of work, and it yeah. proved it wasn't satisfactory. Yeah, all right, so maybe can we go and have a look at the problem? Yes. Um, I know we, we looked at the problem area briefly in the last video. Yes. But things have changed since then. Yes. Stuff has happened, as they say in the classics. Um, so maybe let's go back and have a look at the area that you're trying to fix and then talk about an innovative approach that you found to try and fix the problem. Very good. All right, let's go and have a look. All right, so this is your area that's problematic and oh my God, it's changed quite a bit, Alan. Right, yes, this is the problem we've got here. Wow. That's uh, just one, what you might call a normal winter. Yeah. Um, so we really do have a problem here in that the bank's completely unstable and you need to be able to stabilise it to then grow some vegetation on it to make it a long-term prospect. Yeah, I started just a temporary measure of putting a, a small 90 mil pipe there to try and get the water down this slope. Yep. That wasn't big enough and I had a bit of a 150 mil pipe that just about did the job, but yep. uh, I think the long term is to get it stable with vegetation and uh, and, this... and try and get the, the moisture to move through the environment rather than through a pipe. Yes. So what what's the plan with the earth mover now to um, to fix up this issue before you can restore it? Well, there is a, a bit of uh, art or rock fill that's been put in here, but I'm getting uh, the excavator. Earth moving guy is going to make a spoon drain up there and then we'll roll out this concrete matting on this and then uh, that should stabilise the soil and uh, be able to have grass and other vegetation grow up through it. I'm intrigued about this. Tell me a little bit about this concrete matting. I haven't seen it or worked with it before. What, what's the theory? Because you're trying this product out as well for the first time. Yes, yes. Well, it's a, a nylon mesh matting with yep. concrete lumps impregnated onto it. And okay. that holds it down in position, the concrete holds it down and the nylon will hold it all together. But it is fully permeable so that plants, grasses, small shrubs and that can grow on it if you allow it, need okay. to. And it, it should just hold that soil in position and allow the water, the high flow 
times the water run over the surface and get down into the creek where it uh, wants to end up uh, without taking the soil with it. Well, the operator's on his way. Yes. Let's go and have a look at the product. I'm keen to find out a little bit more about it. Yes. Um, it's got me intrigued. And yes. then hopefully we'll be able to uh, drag the product down here and uh, fix up this bank and install your uh, concrete matting. As always, it's a challenge to keep up with Alan as he hares back to the shed to show me his concrete matting. He goes at a million miles an hour. Well, I'll tell you what, Alan, I'm a young bloke, so I have trouble keeping up with you. This is the concrete matting and this is what it looks like. Yes, this is the project we've got here now. This is an interesting product, isn't it? I mean, we've got felt on top of a nylon webbing on top of clumps of concrete that look like they've been somehow moulded into it. They tell me this is a biodegradable geo mesh or geo mesh. Okay, yep. So the idea being that that's what going to act like a fertiliser or something it eventually. Breaks down, breaks down into a, yes, and acts like a fertiliser to the, uh, you know, a composty type fertiliser to the, uh, the seed, that's what I understand, yeah. And so this goes underneath the matting when it's rolled out. Yes. And so that's going to give you a little bit more stability just at the early stages yes. for, the, for the soil as well, yes, I assume? Yes, until everything stabilises, yeah. You have a forklift? Yes, I have a 1.8 tonne forklift here and uh, these weigh 1.6. Yeah, okay, so you just slung it off? Yes. So people would need to be aware of the fact that they would have to have a forklift to work with this sort of product? Yes, something product. that can handle up around that 2 tonne type figure. Or they'd need to get a crane truck or sort something out. You yes. don't want to have the truck driver turn up and then go, well, no. geez, how do we get this off? Because I don't think you'd want to roll this off the truck. It's, no, no, it's not going to move not very sort of far. No. Yeah. So in terms of excavators, you've got an operator that's going to be using what sort of tonnage excavator? He's uh, had a look at the product and he's thinking a, an 11 tonne machine that he's got. He's got a smaller 5 tonne, he's got 11 and he's got a 22 tonne machine. He's thinking the 11 will be able to do the uh, soil preparation or the earth preparation and handle this mat, roll it out, and get it in position so that it can be... Uh, that's what he's thinking at the moment. So an 11 tonne machine, that's about average size, medium isn't it? Size, medium, medium size. Medium, yeah. So that cuts down on the cost a bit. I suppose if you needed a really big machine to handle yes, this stuff, it yes. would be more expensive. It's all dollars per hour, yeah. depending on the machine size. All right. Well, let's go down there, take the stuff down and see how we get on. Okay. I, I can't wait to see this work. Um, so let's go and meet uh, Glenn, your yes. excavator operator, and yes. find out about all that he's going to do. Very good. G'day, Glenn. Glenn yeah, yeah, how are you, mate? Pleased to meet you, Tim. Yeah. Good to um, meet you, mate. Thanks for spending the time to explain the job. Um, I think it's important from an earth moving point of view um, that people understand the prep work required before we use these mats. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, would you mind just stepping us through the process that you're going to take today? Yeah, no worries. Yep. As you can see, we've got a fair bit of erosion from water on this job. Um, so, we're going to reinstate this um, little gully here. Um, so we're going to put some of this good compactable clay back in back in the hole and compact it back in in 250 mil roughly layers. Um, then we're going to shape it and, and get it ready for the mat. Um, we've then got to dig a trench across um, near where the existing fence goes and bury the mat. Just tucking in the leading edge of the mat where the water runs over. Yeah, so the water goes over the top and. Um, the, the matting's about 15 metres in length. Yep. Which should Measure get us, it out, should get us nearly to the water level. All right, well, I'm keen to see how you um, get on with this job, Glenn. Yep. And um, we might uh, take a little bit of video as you go through. No worries. Fantastic. So we've got some material from the dam clean out that we did last year that we're using to go back in this washout. Um, we're just mixing it up. Um, we should be adding a little bit of water to um, the compaction just to give us a bit more compaction. And um, yeah, we're just laying this back in with the mud bucket and then putting the compaction wheel on and rolling it in just to, to help it stabilise. So we 
laying the material out in, in about 200 to 250 mil thickness and then we'll track it in with the machine. The excavator weighs 13 and a half tonne so you get a little bit of compaction with the tracks but um, having that compaction wheel with a quite a narrow surface area always helps um, really, really get that clay back to where it should be. So we're just going to track it in now. Just got to hang on. back on and um, give it another going over. You find after track rolling it, you still get about another 50 mil of compression with the clay after using the wheel. I think now, Alan, if we can get a bit of um, topsoil, subsoil, just to finish off. While Glenn put down some topsoil, Alan raced off to go and get the concrete matting and have everything in place for him before he needed access to it. Being an experienced campaigner, Alan knows the benefit of having everything ready for your operator just when they need it. Anyhow, Glenn, this is all the good gear that comes with this uh, matting, all the uh, instructions. instructions. When you're finished, yep. <laughs> you read them. <laughs> So it's that water flow. Oh yeah, yep. Yep, with our trench, with our trench there. 450. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's that one. That's what I was talking about there. Oh yeah, yep. Okay. So that's the sort of shape we want to finish up with here. Yeah. So yeah, I reckon we'll run a, a 1500 trench, just a shallow trench right through the guts there. Yes. And um, we need 15 metres. Yes. And now we'll, we'll mark out our 15 metres um, from the start of the creek back this way and um, we'll work out where we're going to dig our trench to bury the start of it. So Glenn, just explaining very quickly to us what's happening here. We've got, uh, we've come up 13 metres from the bottom of your worked area yep. where you've done basically Hold it, haven't you? Yep. Um, and then we're going to dig a trench at the 13 metre mark here. What, what's the purpose of that trench? Uh, just so we can bury the material um, so the water doesn't get underneath the matting and, yep. and wash, wash the soil away again. So um, it's okay if it percolates through the matting, it's not okay if it gets under the frame. That's correct. That's correct. Yep. <laughs> just going to dig a shallow swale drain um, before we put the matting in, um, about 800 wide, 8 to 900 mil wide, just so the water concentrates in the middle and having, having a tilt bucket to do this makes life a lot easier. Track over and do the other side. Just get the material off to the side there to 
cover the edge of the matting once it's in place. Quick clean out with a shovel and pretty much happy days. So Glenn, this is just a quick roll to finish it off. Yeah, that's it mate. Now he's going to dig a trench in front because remember we've got to put about half a metre of this matting under the ground. So we've marked a line about a metre in front of the fence because if you need to rebury the mat or whatever you don't have, want to have to pull up your fence. What's in there? Hey, what's in there? Hey, if you want to get hold of one of these things, they're actually made in Australia by a company called Australian Concrete Mats. They're made in New South Wales, but they ship around the country. There's a link to the company on my website, timthompson.ag, so jump over there when you finish watching this. It was critical to line up the roll well at the start, because as you're unravelling the thing, it's pretty heavy and difficult to realign. Glenn took his time. And because they weren't familiar with this product, the boys actually put a bucket in front of the roll to begin with, just in case it got away from them. Turns out, no dramas at all. Even in a one in three slope, this roll never looked like it was going to get away from the excavator at all. By working at the sides of the roll, Glenn was able to make minute adjustments as he unrolled it and kept the thing almost perfectly straight, requiring only a very small amount of readjustment once we finished rolling it out. Once he was sure that there was no danger, Glenn swapped buckets, took the small one up out of the way and continued to unroll it using this bucket. Now I'm pretty sure this bit's not in the instructions, in fact it's probably not recommended, but Alan and his son couldn't resist just rolling out the last few metres themselves. Because Glenn had done such a careful job rolling it out, there was only a few minor adjustments required to get the matting lined up perfectly straight with the sides of the swale. The adjustment bars provided worked a treat and this was an easy job. With the matting perfectly lined up now with the swale, it was time for Glenn to use his subtle touches to cover over the edges and the end to make sure that this matting stays in place for many years to come. Looks quite a neat job. So what do you think Alan? It's looking good so far, we, uh, I guess it'll, I'm uh, hoping and uh, it'll do the job for us, it's got to get water from there about four metres down this angle yep. without washing, that's what the... So that's 12 foot you. for the imperialists out yeah, there? Four metres, that's about 13, 14 metres down there, Yep. And it should just end up like a rippling brook down there on the surface. And now we're going to plant some grass seed on this because yes. apparently the matting is also sort of a, a biodegradable sort of fertiliser thing. It just helps it bed in. Yes, keep some moisture up for the young seedling grass. It could be uh, well late winter and springtime before there's any serious flow down here. So that could give us six months of uh, get some grasses established here on the surface. And then, uh, then if there is any real big fall, fall or rain. It'll all be settled and sort of stabilised. Now you've got to put your fence back. We only just put it up. With the uh, fencing that we've chosen, these uh, wood shield posts with the Davos clips on it, just got to put the two posts back in here where we've been working and uh, we'll be able to strain those wires up, reapply them to the posts very simply with a battery drill. Well Alan, 
good on you, mate, for taking the time to look after the creeks and waterways, because um, everyone downstream benefits off what we do, and, and your property will benefit as well yes. from managing your water flows properly. Um, I really appreciate the time that you've spent with us today yes. and having us out here. <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. It's, um, it's always great to see innovators working in agriculture. Thank you. And what, my, what an innovative product. Yes. So, yeah. No, should be all good. And Glenn, mate, mate, thank you very much for your expert commentary on this no and worries. your advice. No worries. Um, and telling us all about what you did today. It's yeah. been fantastic. It's been a pleasure, mate. No worries at all. Now, Glenn is an earth-moving contractor, uh, and you're, you've also got access to fencing contractors and various other people. You're yep. situated in the Yarra Valley. Yep. So if you live on the eastern side of Melbourne and you witnessed pure poetry today with his machines, you've got several of them. Yep, we certainly have. So please do get in touch with Glenn. How can people get in touch with you, Glenn? Uh, my company is Smooth Drive Rural Services and my contact number is 0412 and um, yeah, no worries. Looks like this is an environmental product after all, Alan. You've got a frog crawling through here already. Yes, we've got a few around here and we like to keep them happy. If you like this video, please hit the little subscribe button down there, give it a thumbs up, you've got no idea how much that helps, and if you want more content, check out timthompson.ag.